We are simply stuck. Um, we believe that it's some kind of negotiation between the charter airline company and t- the Taliban, mm-hmm. but we don't have visibility on that. We're really just kind of helplessly sitting there waiting to be called to the airport. And that's it's been eight days now. And the things that were, so that's the overall picture, but what we're immediately concerned about is the safety where we're being, being held to wait. Um, I have a group that includes teenage girls who are traveling away from their families because we were told there's not space for families. So they're, they're vulnerable and they've been sitting there for eight days and these places are getting more and more crowded as the word gets out that flights are leaving. Lots of people are pushing their way in, paying bribes to try to get on the manifest, that sort of thing. And, and there's no guarantees of anyone's safety. The Taliban have directly come into the space a number of times and arrested people or pulled people out. And so, you know, our girls are terrified of what might happen. There are reports that hundreds of people uh, with the right documentation are trying to leave Afghanistan on a number of flights. uh, And these flights are US approved charter flights now. And this includes the 34 girls and young women that you're trying to help get out of the country. What are you hearing about why these flights aren't leaving? It's changed. Originally, it was a glitch in the US government where policy changed on the 31st. So the State Department instructed CENTCOM that they weren't to receive charters out of Afghanistan because there couldn't be proper vetting of the manifests. So that that cost us a couple of days, um, as far as we understand. That was sorted out, but then now it's in the hands of the Taliban and Khmer or whomever else is, is arguing about why they can or can't go. And the Taliban have said that people who have a reason to leave and, and are approved to leave can do so. So why are they not letting us leave? Mm. Who, who are these young women and who are these girls that, that you are trying to get out of Afghanistan? So they're all part of our, our organization, Ascend Athletics, and we do women's leadership development through sports. And we've done a lot in the uh, mountaineering and rock climbing. These girls are athletes, but they're also known within their communities. We have a very strong emphasis on volunteering. They're known people advocating for women's rights. They also are Hazara ethnically, which puts them automatically in a higher risk category. And uh, they all have big dreams of going to university. And um, yeah, they're, they're, they can't go back. Mm. What have, what's been the main challenge of getting these 34 people out? And uh, can you describe some of, I guess, the, the ordeal that these girls and women have gone through? Sure. It's, it's been, um, as I say, eight days in Mazar. <clears throat> Before that, a number of these girls were called to the Kabul airport and tried to access the gates there, um, which, as I'm sure you've seen, some really harrowing situations. And our girls were right in the middle of that. Um, and, and it's not just girls, like I said, it's some staff as well. Um, the one that I can't, <laughs> I can't sleep until this kid is safe. He's a three-year-old um, whose parents brought him out. Um, that first day, which is now 12 days ago, when they went to the airport, they were part of the the chaos at Abbey Gate, and a person was killed right next to this family, and this three-year-old witnessed that. He's been in the same pair of pajamas since he left home on that day because everybody thought they were just going directly to the airport. They were told not to bring stuff. So, you know, this kid is now sitting in Mazar on day 12, and um, that's the kind of trauma that, that people have been through, and, and our girls as well. So. Um, yeah, it's been it's been difficult. The Taliban are in control of this airport in the north of Afghanistan. Uh, are they the ones that are stopping these girls from leaving? And have the, has there been any dialogue between your organization and the Taliban? We don't have any direct contact with the Taliban or or the U.S. government or Khmer. We're just one of many groups that are sitting there waiting. Um, if I could speak to the Taliban, I would ask them to please let us go. I, they have said they will let people go that have the documentation to leave the country and a legitimate reason to do so. We are those people. Why are they keeping us there? And they are putting girls at risk that need to be out and that need to be safe. So I don't have the ability to say that directly to them, but they're in charge now. So this is their show and and they need to do the right thing. What will happen if these girls can't get on the plane out? It's difficult to think about that um, on a couple of levels. Physical security is one. Um, they're in Mazar, which is a very long way from Kabul. It's you know a road trip through um, a lot of 
uh, unsafe territory, um, lots of checkpoints to navigate, and nobody can say what may or may not happen to a bunch of girls traveling on that route. I can't protect them. We can't provide them security on that route. So it's really um, a horrifying thought that they would have to perhaps turn around. Um, also, because we've heard a lot of accounts that people are being stopped and those who have been attempting to flee are being marked and punished for it. Um, and then there's the, the mental aspect. They are absolutely crushed. They, they are there in the czar because they can't imagine that they can live under a Taliban run Afghanistan. They, they can't, they can't contemplate going back. So I worry about the mental health of anybody that's forced to turn around and, and all hope is lost for them. And it's just, it's, um, it's too crushing to really think about. We, we have to go forward. I really hope that, you know, something can be resolved very, very soon. They've been waiting for a very long time. Marina, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you.